what we do, we're going to meditate for a few minutes only. Yeah, it's better to have short sessions instead of trying to meditate and then the mind is distracted all the time. Yeah, so what we're going to do is um, counting of the breath, as we just explained. Yeah? So, I don't know, if you're comfortable on the floor, you sit on the floor. If you're comfortable in a chair, you can sit in a chair, no problem. Yeah? So the main thing is that the spine is straight. Yeah? So the spine should be straight up and the head is slightly bent forward so that the crown of the head is in one line with your spine. Yeah? So this would be uh, straight. And the hands you can put, traditionally say, right on the left, but just you can put them in your lap like a relaxed manner. The shoulders also should be loose, a little bit of air uh, between the elbows and, and your chest. Yeah? And in this tradition, we don't totally close the eyes because then we can get sleepy and dull and we don't totally open the eyes yeah, because then we get distracted what we see. Just about to be closed, <coughs> that a little bit of light goes inside. Not that it distracts, but a little bit. Yeah. So mm, the tongue we can put behind the upper teeth in a very relaxed manner. And then we breathe in and out through the nose yeah, in a very uh, natural way. Yeah, so. Uh, then we can yeah, try to do that for a few minutes. So count the breath from one to 10. Yeah, if you uh, breathe every in breath as one, out breath as two, in breath as three, out breath as four. So we count from one to 10 and then start over counting. Yeah? So if a thought comes up, don't pay attention, just let it go. Yeah? Don't engage in that thought. Just the only thing you're doing is the counting of the breath. Yeah? So let's do that for uh, about two minutes. Then we can uh, relax again a little bit. So, uh, in this kind of uh, meditation, the quali quality is more important than quantity. You know? So, it's better to do like a few minutes at a time and relax and again, than it is just to sit and try to meditate. Because then, sometimes it happens we just get distracted. Yeah? Sometimes, especially uh, if you do it for a long time, then it sometimes happens that all of a sudden, <laughs> Uh, for a few minutes you're totally there or somewhere else. Yeah? So what you happened this morning or what's happening tomorrow or you know, the mind is totally thinking in a in particular thought pattern. Yeah? And then uh, we lose, actually sometimes after a few minutes we realize, oh, but I'm, oh yeah, I'm meditating. <laughs> I'm meditating, I should count my breath. You know? But then uh, you're distracted. So two very important mental factors we're going to use. Yeah? So if you're interested, you can write them down. Yeah? So one is uh, alertness and one is mindfulness. Yeah, so don't confuse this mindfulness mental factor with uh, mindfulness for busy professionals. <laughs> so here the actual traditional mental factors have been explained now. So there's two mental factors. As we know, we have main mind. Yeah? Uh, we have five types of sense consciousnesses. I think everybody knows that, right? No? Yeah? Eye, ear, nose, tongue, tangible. Yeah. That's five. And we have mental consciousness. Yeah? So uh, mental consciousness, uh, when we meditate, is mental, co mental consciousness. Yeah? So uh, what is mental consciousness? It can be of different types. Yeah? So it can be uh, direct perception or conceptual consciousness, for example. Yeah? So here, mental consciousness, uh, we meditate. Yeah? That's what we use. Counter breath is actually mental consciousness. Yeah? So. Every main mind, so to say, so we have five sense consciousness and one mental consciousness, making six, six types of consciousness or six types of main mind. So every main mind can have certain mental factors accompanying that main mind, like a king and a retinue, you can say, you know, it's very similar. So there's two, like attachment, anger, jealousy, pride, they're actually mental factors. Yeah? So mental factors can be classified in virtues, yeah, positive ones, negative ones, neutral ones. Yeah. So sleep, for example, is a neutral one. Yeah. Sometimes we go to bed uh, with a very positive intention and then the sleep turns out to be positive. Yeah. Or you wake up very uh, clear and, and, and happy or uh, you know, clear of mind. Well, sometimes you're agitated in the evening and 
or tired and agitated or both and you fall asleep and then in the morning you wake up and you're still tired and you know the feeling <laughs> so uh, then you can see also an influence right that kind of attitude or, or motivation yeah? so so here mental consciousness uh, and mental factors so mental factors can be virtue virtuous non-virtuous and neutral so sleep is a neutral one yeah? because depending on what we think before falling asleep that influence the time of, of sleep yeah? for example so there's non-virtuous like anger attachment jealousy pride they are non-virtuous or unwholesome uh, mental factors why because we just saw they cause and they serve the mind they cause a kind of suffering of the mind yeah? so when a person gets angry at a situation or a particular other individual then there's uneasiness unpleasant kind of feeling yeah, that comes along with that function of that mental factor. Um, there's also virtuous mental factors, yeah, like uh, you know, fate, or you can think about states of mind like love and kindness, compassion, aspiration to become uh, a particular person or a good human being. Yeah, so there are virtuous mental factors. Yeah, so then these mental factors we're going to talk about now, yeah, the two very important for this med meditation, is alertness and mindfulness. Yeah, so. Alertness meaning what it says, being alert. Yeah? So like a policeman on the side. Yeah? So you're counting the breath with your main mind. So that's the main thing you're doing. But from the corner of the mind, there's a kind of a policeman watching. As soon as the thought comes up, don't pay attention. Just go back. And mindfulness actually is remembrance. Yeah? The real meaning of mindfulness is remembrance. Yeah? So you remember what you're actually doing, which is the counting of the breath. And so one mental factor in the corner of the mind is aware am I still counting or not or am I getting distracted yeah? and with uh, mindfulness you bring your mind back if the mind gets distracted yeah yeah you got it Those can two. we call alertness checking <coughs> yeah you can checking but yeah can you say kendri or bindu kendri or bindu Ale, it's not. It's, it's been used to to come to kind of a concentration, but it's not concentration itself. It's a mental factor that helps you to get this concentration of, of only counting the breath without any other di distraction or any thought. So d what we have to, our aim here, is to focus on the breath and do nothing else. Yeah, whatever thought comes up, we shouldn't pay attention to. Yeah, so that helps us to concentrate. In order, the, the mental factor of concentration yeah, is also one aspect, but alertness is a slightly different one. Because the function of alertness is actually checking if the mind is getting distracted or not. Yeah? yeah. So, mm, you know, that's alertness and mindfulness. Yeah? So, there's two obstacles to our concentration meditation. Two obstacles. So, what is one is mental dullness and one is distraction. Yeah? So, Mental dullness, for example, if you wake up in the morning and you're still a bit tired, you know, you didn't get enough sleep or you were thinking about things or falling asleep, so you wake up and you want to meditate in the morning and the mind is not like, you can't really think clearly, it's like this, you know, very difficult, like a stone, <laughs> very difficult to move, you know. So then it's also easy to fall asleep. Yeah, that's mental dullness, there's one obstacle to meditation. Yeah. Another, the second obstacle is distraction. As we just talked about, yeah, the mind out of uh, scatters. Yeah, for example, if you have a strong coffee, I don't know, in Delhi they drink also don't. in South India. We <laughs> drink quite some coffee in Delhi, maybe also. I don't know, <laughs> drink coffee. You know, people drink coffee. You know, <laughs> strong one. Coffee, yeah. coffee day. Uh, coffee, coffee day. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> this also, yeah, 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 okay. So you can imagine if you have a really strong cappuccino or a double one, or, or you drink two or three just next to each other, then the mind gets like, <laughs> no, you know the feeling. Yeah. That's scattering of the mind. Yeah. So that also doesn't help. Sometimes, if you know, if the mind is 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 this dullness is there, you know, that mental dullness of sleep. Yeah. If you have a little bit of coffee, then it helps. <laughs> but if it's too much, then it goes the other direction. Yeah. So uh, that's the middle way of drinking coffee. <laughs> so you have to have a middle way of, you know, uh, sometimes it can do or a strong tea, you know, Indian chai. You know nice strong one that helps you know sometimes can all just wash your face or you know try to uh, have this clarity yeah? so there's two obstacles yeah the mental dullness and distraction 
Yeah, so both have to be avoided. Yeah, so this matter of fact, alertness checks if the mind gets dull or if the mind gets distracted. And if so, it rings the bell, and with mindfulness, you come back to the concentration. Oh, I should concentrate now. You know, I should only focus upon the counting of the breath. One, two, you know, to ten. Yes, yeah, a bit clear, those two mental factors. In last, sometimes I think Jeffrey Hopkins or others, do they translate alertness as introspection? Introspection, yeah. Okay. Too, yeah. Which is closer to the Tibetan, I wonder. Shishin. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah it's sometimes terms, they don't totally cover the meaning. That's the problem in, in mm -hmm. English. You know? What does the Tibetan mean? Shishin. What does it mean? Shishin is, is, is a kind of a mind of analysis, oh. yeah, with, with checks, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So introspection sometimes can be used, yeah. Some people prefer alertness because it's like yes or no is happening or not, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because introspection... Or analytical mind, no? It's an, it's an analytical mind, but in this case it's a mental factor with a specific kind of function, you know that just analyzes if there is something happening or not, you know. It doesn't really analyze things like, like the mental factor wisdom, for example. Yeah. It's just the mere function is just, is something happening or not, without analyzing how does it happen and why does it happen. Discernment? Yeah, I mean, there's many terms, but maybe keep it with alertness for the time being. Maybe. Okay. So introspection, and Jeffrey Hopkins uses uh, Elizabeth Knapper, yeah, 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 true. Would it be the intuitive mind that just tells you what it is without analyzing? Which mind? The intuitive mind. Ale. That just tells you what it is, mm. but it does not analyze. Ale. But it tells you the right thing or the wrong thing? <laughs> well, the intuitive mind never tells you the wrong thing. Ale. It That's tells a good you one. what it is, whether you like it. It it's a very pure, a pure intuitive yes. mind. Yeah. Yes. If that pure intuitive mind is there, then maybe it's okay. But if, for me, it's not there. It's not there for me. So yeah, so there's, there's two mental factors, you know, uh, alertness and mindfulness. So they're very important in this context of training, generated concentration. So that's concentration meditation. Yeah. Then there's another meditation we call analytical. Meditation. Yeah. So this form of mindfulness is a tool for us to become aware of what's on going on in our mind. Yeah. Because with this kind of what we call placement meditation or concentration meditation, and yeah, the mind is placed upon an object or concentrated upon an object. Yeah. Which in this case is the breath. Yeah. So it's called placement meditation. So that's needed. Without the mind being concentrated, it's very difficult. To do anything with the mind, yeah, or even studying or reading a book, yeah. Sometimes you read a page and then what did I read again? And then there was no concentration, yeah. So that's even more true for the mind. Yeah? So that's why we have to develop this kind of placement meditation. Yeah. On top of that, uh, that doesn't that give us some peace of mind after some time of practice, yeah, some quietness of mind and it brings a kind of awareness, yeah, of what's going on inside. That's definitely very very beneficial. But it's not an ultimate goal, yeah, that peace of mind. It's a tool. Yeah, the real transformation of the mind happens with an analytical meditation. Yeah, as I said before, anger can analyze in a few split seconds why a person or situation is, is not pleasurable or not good. You know? So the mind can also analyze in a positive way and generate a positive state of mind based on reasoning. Yeah, so that's why reasoning is extremely important. That's how our mind functions. And by the power of reasoning, yeah, to a positive state of mind, yeah, habituation is being built up. Yeah. And by the power of that, we can change the mind, transform the mind. Yeah. So that's just to make the picture a little bit complete, that we have to do an analytical meditation, we can do maybe another next time. So here mainly we focus upon this placement meditation, because that's the title <laughs> of the talk, Mindfulness for for everybody, not only <laughs> basic professionals, but everybody, you know, so... Uh, but this is an initial step. Without this mindfulness, uh, this meditation on the breath, and then awareness is very difficult. If there's no awareness, there is no understanding of what disturbs the mind and what gives happiness to the mind. Yeah? And if that's not there, there's no spill to growth. Yeah? So that's why this place in meditation is very essential uh, at the beginning. 
but not the ultimate goal, because it helps us to be aware and helps us to generate concentration, which is also being used in analytical meditation. Yeah, so then, in analytical meditation, what happens? Very interesting uh, process, uh, and you know, it really works. If you think about the negative aspects of something you don't like and like to abandon and think that are the positive or the benefits of the opposite of it, then it changes. For example, an addiction, right? If you have an addiction, then the more you analyze the faults of the addiction and the benefits of, of being free of that addiction, it's possible to change. Yeah, a person who never thinks about the negative sides of the, afflict of the addiction, then very difficult. Yeah, so, this is a mental training. Same with this uh, Jeffrey Schwartz uh, research regarding his uh, OCD patients. Yeah, he teaches them how to actually make a decision yeah. and habituate yourself to that decision. So when the brain says, wash your hands, you say, no, I'll go to the garden. And then you habituate yourself to that going to the garden aspect. Yeah? So then in that way, he helps people to be aware, first of all, of what comes up in the mind. What kind of thought? Sometimes for the same thing, no? All of a sudden, negative thought comes up, and we just before we know it, we follow it. Yeah. But the clue is to before it becomes totally manifest. Yeah. That that negative state of mind or negative thought to counteract it. Yeah. So, uh, same with anger, for example. When anger is 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 manifest, and you, another person tells you, you meditate on patience, then you get even more angry. <laughs> so that doesn't really work. Yeah. So you have to meditate when anger doesn't arise. Yeah. And then you learn how to counteract the antidotes with an analytical meditation. <coughs> yeah, counteract with the antidotes. So, you, so if you have a meditation session of four minutes, yeah, so for two minutes you analyze. Very neutral perspective. That's very important here. Don't engage in the situation you experience. Yeah. So, you know, if you watch TV, uh, you watch TV on a daily basis maybe, <laughs> I know, but you can watch TV in different ways. <laughs> so, for example, a person who looks at a movie, action movie, a lot of shooting and uh, all kind of things that get your attention all the time, people are, no? they're totally into the set, TV set, and they don't know what's happening next to them. You know that kind of mindset? <coughs> but if you look at them, and you look at the screen, and you look at them on the screen, without really en engaging in, in let your mind be overpowered what happens in the TV, then it's very neutral perspective of observing what's happening, right? Yeah. So that's the clue here also. So you have to have this natural, uh, you know, subjective kind of, from the side, you look at a situation in your life, when you get uptight with a person or with a situation, and you analyze, oh, what did it do? That's uh, it's, it's business, no? That's, <laughs> that's like busy professionals, Buddhism, science of the mind, is like doing business with the mind, you know? It's very similar, because you analyze what's beneficial and what's not. Very, very logical. You know, you from the corner of the mind you look at what happened, this affliction anger, what did it do? Disturb my mind. Uh, what did it do to others? Cause suffering. Other person maybe cannot sleep anymore at night, you know. I said something wrong. I destroyed the relationship, you know. So then you see the faults for two minutes, right? You analyze different angles without engaging in you know, from a neutral perspective. Then you come to a conclusion. Yeah, so, okay, anger is not really, it's not a constructive emotion, it's destructive. And then you focus on that. Yeah? Then you move to the qualities of practicing patience, for example. Yeah? So, if you keep your mind cool, the mind, you know, is clear and can make the right decision. It has a very good effect on the person who gets angry at you. You know, you know the example of, <laughs> I always take the example of dogs, <laughs> you know. If you, three dogs, India, it's a very good example. So, sometimes you see... It's in monastery also, a lot of street dogs. Sometimes it's one dog very agitated, whoa, 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 and then fighting and darking, and the other uh, barks at the other dogs, you know? And then one dog comes in from another territory, and then the dog's fighting and barking, and the dog is with me, there, he, he. and then all of a sudden, the anger, you see, it disappears. The, the, the other dog doesn't know what to do, doesn't know how to react. <laughs> but sometimes the other dog comes, the new dog, and then, whoa, whoa, so he also barks, and then the fight, you know? But then sometimes the dog comes in and then wicks his tail and, and then <laughs> the dog was in the rage of anger, doesn't know what to do, and then, oh yeah, let's play, and then it's over. <laughs> you know, it's very interesting. You know, for us sometimes, human beings don't say we're the same, but, uh, but the, those afflictions, very similar. You know, if 
if the person is very agitated and uses a lot of harsh speech to you, you keep your cool and you know you try to solve the situation. It's much more beneficial, right? And you make your mind is clear, so you can make the right decision. Yeah, you cannot change the person totally, right? Nothing, uh, but with a good intention, you can do the best way you can. So then you analyze that. Yeah, then you see people with a lot of patients, they have more friends. You know, you can think about that way as well. No social benefits. You know, people who are always agitated. You know, you know, a person who is always uptight, you say, yeah, okay, you know, see you next time. You know, <laughs> but a person who is nice and kind and, and, and patient, and it's like easy to talk with and hang out with, right? Same thing. Right? So you think about the benefits of practicing patience, you analyze many angles, and then concentrate on that. Yeah. Okay, so then, by the habituation of seeing the benefits of patience and the negative sides of anger, slowly, slowly, over, uh, you know, over the months or maybe years, there's change. For sure, change. So in the early days, in psychology, they told you you shouldn't suppress anger; you should ventilate it. You know, so they had these courses. You could pay a few hundred, a few hundred euros, and you could punch a pillow for a weekend. You know, but actually, they came to the conclusion that that actually is more harmful in the long term because it habituates again to the reflection. Yeah? So here we try to habituate to something a positive pattern. And that's what happens in analytical meditation. Yeah, so you meditate on the faults of anger and the benefits of, of practicing patience. And then, through the power of that habituation, patience takes over. Yeah, and that's why we talked about, you know, afflictions are a nature of impermanence, so they can be changed. They're not an innate part of the mind, yeah, so they're not in accordance with reality. And patience is a mind that is in accordance with reality. So every mind that is in accordance with reality is kind of constructive and can eliminate a mind that is not in accordance with reality. Yeah, so very interesting that minds of affliction, destructive emotions, they can also be abandoned or eliminated, or be taken away, because they're not in accordance with reality. Yeah, they, they, they wrong forms of consciousness, so to say, mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so, but again, to get a little bit more experience, uh, we do another short two minutes. Yeah. Uh, so again, try to sit relaxed in the same manner and then this time we do the same counting of the breath but use those two mental factors we just talked about yeah so from the corner of the mind as soon as the mind comes okay it's close to eight I have to go soon or <laughs> or the mind thinks about this morning or yesterday or he is quite quiet so you don't hear much from outside but you know sometimes the mind gets distracted just don't pay attention with alertness you be aware and with mindfulness you say oh what I'm doing counting on the breath nothing else just very simple yeah so try to do that for another two minutes, yeah. Mm. Uh, counting all the breaths and, and from one to ten, yeah. Uh, in breath is one, out breath is two, in breath is three. So count from one to ten and start over counting and use these two mental factors, yeah. In that way we just talked about. Yeah. So let's do that for about two minutes. So to uh, make a picture totally complete, um, so we saw that uh, those destructive emotions basically are the cause for suffering, right? Every verbal or physical behavior we do, there's an intention, or like the example I mentioned of a person in prison. Uh, so actually, and disturbed also the mind, so there's different types of suffering caused by those destructive emotions. Yeah? So then, by the power of this kind of mindfulness meditation, concentration we build up, we do this analytical meditation. So applying antidotes. So every affliction has its own antidote. Why? Because it has to have an exactly opposite. As I said, one type of consciousness can only apprehend a particular object in a particular way. So for anger is patience, yeah? for attachment contentment, for example. Yeah? So there's different methods can be used, different antidotes can be used. Yeah? So uh, in that way, you can counteract those afflictions to a certain extent, not to become too manifest. Yeah? But uh, if you really want to eliminate those afflictions, you have to go a step further. Yeah? So uh, from the root. Yeah? So it's like if you have the tree, 
of, of the affliction, whatever affliction there is, and with the, we just talked about it's kind of antidotes in this way, you can cut, yeah? but with a stable X of concentration, yeah, we just did, yeah, the, 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 my, the concentration of the bread, bread, what we call it, concentration meditation, or placement yeah, meditation, I called it, yeah. So that's the stable hands, yeah, and the X is the X of wisdom, yeah, so the wisdom of analyzing, yeah, the negative sides of uh, anger and the positive sides of patience, yeah, and then analyze, come to a conclusion, and then exchange it, yeah, so that's the X of, of wisdom. But there's still a root, right? So the root also has to be eliminated, yeah, so the root of all our problems and the root of all those afflictions is ignorance. Ignorance. Yeah. And what is ignorance? Any ignorance? For example, I don't know what's behind this wall. That's also ignorance. Is that causing or a different one? What kind of ignorance? A wrong view of reality. Of yeah, it's a view. Yeah, it's a wrong view of reality. Exactly. Very good. Yeah. So the ignorance, which is the cause for the afflictions to arise, is what is called the apprehension of a true existing self, or inherently existing self. Yeah? So, for example, when you get angry at a person, or a strong attachment, or jealousy, or pride, whatever happens, initially there's a very egoistic I am me that arises at the level of the, mostly at the heart, like concrete, like a stone. <laughs> so existing all by itself. And based on this, there's a very egoistic of grasping, I'm more important than anybody else, you know, if uh, something happens uh, to you and how oh, dare this person say this to me and uh, all that. So that's a very egoistic, self-centered kind of concept of, of, of I. Yeah. So that, ba that is based on this uh, grasping at a self, of seeing the self as very concrete. Yeah. So uh, the question is, does it exist the way it appears? Yeah. So that's the question, uh, so that we have to examine. Yeah, but generally speaking, that causes those afflictions to arise. Anger, attachment, jealousy, pride. So that has to be eliminated with a correct understanding of actually how the self appears. Yeah? So our body and mind are basically momentary changing, yeah? Yeah, isn't it? Yeah? So there's no place for something that's concrete, separate from body and mind.